Hello everyone guys, uh, in this video I show you the cache and Sprint Boot with Redis. So in the previous video we created we created empty Sprint Boot project with Redis dependency on it. Uh, we usually connected in memory database and Sprint Boot data GPA. Uh, so in this video we implement a cache. Let's create firstly a model which we're gonna uh, store in, in the cache. Let's say we have some product model and we want to store uh, this object in the cache. So firstly, we create a product. We need to add data from Lombok and also we need to add entity to store our product in the database. Let's add ID. And let's add some fields like, for example, title and price. And that's it. Let's create a repository. Just simple GPA repository to be able to store our product in the database. And let's create this service. All the logic with cache will be in the service. Let's add service annotation, Polaris constructor, and let's add logs to be able to log our uh, incoming requests in the product service. So let's auto wire our product repository. And let's create first method. First method, method will be save to save the product. As usual, I'm not gonna validate this product in this tutorial, but yeah, it's better to validate it in the real project. The next thing is get by ID. This method we gonna cache and uh, this method uh, we test with our Redis cache. So let's add, yeah, product repository returns us an optional. So if, let's say, if our product by ID not found, let's throw illegal argument exception and just to And let's say we want to say that uh, product ID is incorrect, something like that. And let's lock mm, the triggering of the method. Or let's say And let's lock also this method. Uh, looks perfect. And next thing, let's create controller. Uh, 
and first method is save. And we're also going to lock the save triggering. Something like that. So we'll be able to, to check if the cache work or not using our locks. So let's auto wire our service. So this part is done and we can connect our cache. Now, firstly, we need to navigate to the, or we need to create some uh, config file or we can add annotation enable caching in the main Spring Boot application class. So we need to add enable caching. Uh, this annotation tells Spring that we'd like to enable caching and we need to specify, specify cache type for the Spring. So we navigate to application properties and tell the Spring cache type equals Redis. As you can see, you have multiple solutions, uh, you can multiple choices uh, here and it depends uh, which ready, uh, which cache type you have, you need to select uh, one. So we have Redis and we select Redis cache type. Um, if you run your, LED, your Redis on the local host, you don't need to specify the host, the username, password or something like that. Um, but yeah, if you run Redis, for example, on another uh, port, you need uh, to specify Spring Redis host, for example, Spring Redis port, and etc. So that's it. And now navigate to our product service and let's cache annotation when we save. So when we save our entity, we want to put it to the cache. So we need to use annotation cache put. Cache put tells the, um, the spring that you want to put this product to the cache. So you need to specify the collection for your cache. Uh, if you place value like product, uh, that means that you will store your product model in the product collection. You can specify even a key for your product collection. Like uh, if we want to uh, cache our find by ID, we can specify the key like product ID. And we will be able to store our product by uh, in cache by ID. So if we want to make some 
method cacheable, we need to specify a specific annotation cacheable. And you need to specify value the object where you want to find these uh, this entity yes this model it's gonna be product because previously we put our object to the product yeah you can even specify the key something like that but it's not um, mandatory and you also can specify for example other uh, other params like condition unless and uh, if you have some condition where you want when you want to skip mm, to put your object to the pro, to the cache you can uh, specify a condition but for now let's just stop on uh, the, the, the simple cache just to get the mm, basic understanding how does this uh, work and how to mm, create a simple cache with redis so and yeah if you wanna uh, delete the cache you can use annotation cache evict so let's add another method to the product to clear all the cache let's create get mapping clear cache Just a method with empty body and we add annotation cache evict and yeah you need to specify and um, product to tell that you wanna uh, delete the cache from the product uh, storage and you can also specify other params like before invocation cache resolver all um, all entries by default all entries uh, are false so if you want to uh, clear all all entries from the product you need to specify all entries true and this uh, this value clears all the entries from your product structure okay let's run our application so we need to use postman to check out uh, to just to trigger our uh, controller and we will check the logs to be able to see if the cache works as we expect so first is save but this time in the previous video we saved users this time we will save product and in the body we're gonna specify title and price hit send let's check it out yeah we need to add also serializable I forgot about it let's restart our application and yeah we can see we stored our product successfully let's create couple of other products 
and we have product two. So now we need to get product by ID. And hit send. And we get our product by ID. So now let's navigate to the logs. Uh, here is our uh, handling save controller request from the product controller. Then we execute save, save product to db from the let's let me navigate to product service. Then we hit another store product with product title product two. And then we just execute handling find by ID from controller. But we don't execute find we don't lock um, the message execute find by id from the db because uh, our cache has this uh, object and uh, we don't hit the dat database to get this product let's check it out once again sorry as you can see only logs from the controller work. So let's just try to clear the storage. Let's duplicate this. Let's try to clear our storage of of our product. So we hit OK and we clear our storage. Now let's Let's try to get the product by ID once again. As you can see, we get this. And now you can see that we execute find by ID from the DB because we cleared our cache. So guys, that's it for today. Uh, just use this cache approach to cache your requests, uh, which uh, which are able to be cached, you know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, stay tuned, goodbye.